Hello everybody, we're in Iceland. The land of fire and ice. And why are we here? Volcanoes. Over 200 volcanoes form this island. There are dormant, extinct, and there are active volcanoes. In fact, there's a volcano about to erupt today, which is extremely exciting. Now, the question is, how have volcanoes formed Iceland? Well, Iceland sits in a perfect spot on the mid-Atlantic ridge, right between the North American plate and the European plate. Those plates are pulling apart. This is a divergent plate, but also there is a hot spot here, which means that the crust of the Earth is extremely thin, making it the perfect place for lava to escape, dry, and form igneous rock. Now, most of the country is made of basalt, and basalt is an igneous rock. Let me show you what it looks like. It looks a little bit like this, and most of the country is actually made of this. But how has lava formed this entire country? Well, the culprit is volcanoes, and over my right shoulder, you will see we're about to head to the top of this ancient crater, where we are going to meet a volcanologist who's going to tell us exactly how it happens. Let's go. Now, as we make our way to the crater's edge, it's important to note that there are so many features here to look at, so many clues from the past. Take a look at this. Now, this is dried lava, and as you can see, the lava's oozed over the edge, and as it's oozed over, it's literally dried whilst running down this rock. Lava is extremely viscous, which means it runs really slow, a little bit like honey. Now, let's get a move on to the top of the volcano, where you can see our volcanologist is waiting. Let's go. Now, the last time this volcano erupted was 1,100 years ago. And many people ask, how do volcanoes like this really change the landscape? Well, if you look behind me, you'll see a vast plain of dark rock. That is the lava flow. And as it flows from the crater all the way down to the ocean here, you can see how it's changed the entire landscape, covering it with this amazing igneous rock. So let's go to the top and find out exactly how it all works. And after a long journey, we finally made it to the top of this volcano. And we find Marcos here, our volcanologist. Marcos, how are you, sir? Hey, Gavin, I was waiting for you. Finally, I yeah, made it to the top. It. What an amazing place. It is, it really is. Now, Marcos is here to explain to us exactly how volcanoes work. We've seen the rock, we've seen the basalt, we've seen the lava fields. What are we looking at here, Marcos? So right here, we have an extinct crater. So a crater is one of these surface expressions of volcanoes. What a volcano is really, it's the ejection up in the surface of either lava or gases or both of volcanic material of any kind. So we need to imagine when we have a volcano that we have underneath of us a magma chamber, a reservoir of all this melted rock. Wow. And that melted rock makes it to the surface in different ways. One way is through this central vent and creating explosions. In this case, it's an outward explosion that generated this crater. Wow. So we're right in the place where it happened. This one is around 5,000 years. So it's already started to become vegetated and it started to slowly being eroded down. Now you said that this volcano is extinct. Extinct means dead. That means this one is not going to erupt anymore, correct? Yes, correct. So if it becomes detached from that reservoir underneath or that reservoir cools down completely, it won't erupt any time uh, again. Now, there are other types of volcanoes. There is dormant and there is active. Tell us about the differences. Definitely. So the active volcanoes, and here in Iceland there are several of them, they are pretty much either erupting or they can erupt anytime in the future. Wow. So they are connected to this heat source in behind or underneath them and they can erupt at any time. Right, and what about a dormant volcano? This is one that's sleeping. 
the sleeping volcanoes, the dormant volcanoes, they are quiet nowadays, but they can potentially erupt in the future. Wow, and so, I understand they have patterns, they erupt every thousand years or 10,000 years or 500 years. Is it hard to predict when they're going to erupt? There might be some pattern to them, and it's not very easy to predict. So that's why volcanologists are all the time surveying and aiming to understand these volcanoes better. So, for example, here in Iceland, they are monitoring all of the active volcanic systems, seeing how they behave and when they might erupt in the future. Now, for the children at home, we're actually in Iceland as we speak, and this morning it was announced that there is a potential volcanic eruption coming in the next day or two. The magma is building below the earth and it wants to escape, but who knows when it will come. It could be tomorrow, it could be in two months. Volcanoes can sometimes be dangerous, but they've actually saved the earth many times. Can you tell us a couple of those occasions? I understand that the earth was once covered in complete ice and volcanoes did something magical. Yes. Earth is very unique in that it's active. One of the expressions of this activity is actually volcanoes. We have a lot of heat inside our planet that is moving things around and this is what creates a lot of the conditions that, for, for example, for life are beneficial. So as you said, in the short term, they can be very destructive and they have been destructive in the past, but they can also generate life in the way that they circle around different elements, they recycle things around. And as you said, when Earth was as a whole completely covered by ice, the volcano saved us, spewing a lot of CO2 or carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, warming the planet and creating, again, life possible. So Earth as a whole has a bit of a thermostat. It regulates its temperature long periods of time. It's very smart at that. Very smart at that. Now, as you can see, without volcanoes, there literally would be no life on the planet. Certainly no humans. This week, we want you to make your very own volcano. And down below, you will see a set of guidelines. We want you to make your own volcano. We're going to ask you to erupt it using a chemical composition. Down below, you'll see if you mix two chemicals together, you can find in your house, you can have your very own eruption in your school or even in your home. Marcos, been amazing to learn from you this week about volcanoes. You. See you all next time.